it's not your model it's a whole course really hard for me to understand yeah uh, hi everyone welcome to another episode of spill the beans right now joining us today we have kelvin who was my classmate at kings college and he's here to spill some beans with us welcome to our channel <laughs> kelvin so good thank to you have for you. having me Kelvin is honestly a very hard working dedicated and I've heard from many friends that you're very organized so <laughs> he has a very exceptional academic and a professional journey so he's he was very kind enough to share it with us so <laughs> first question that I have in my mind is can you share your academic journey with us I mean yeah I went to high school in um in South Africa I moved to the UK to Edinburgh to do my undergraduate in um, pharmacology. I started off doing biomedical sciences and then I changed into pharmacology, well, specialized in pharmacology. Um, yeah, in the honors years. And then finished that and I moved to London to do clinical pharmacology at King's College London, which... Yes, that's where we met. Down, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you were looking for various options to study abroad, you had various places in your mind, various universities mm -hmm. in mind. So my question is, why did you choose UK? Why what attracted <laughs> you to UK? Oh, I mean, I guess you know, UK education is known to be, you know, it's top. It's they, that's where you get the top universities. It's where you get um, yeah. like yeah, the top colleges, the top courses. Um, of, I guess. Opportunities in, in, in biomedical sciences and pharmacology isn't really big in South Africa, really. Like, it's it's really not. Um, I mean, I guess at that time, I didn't know what I wanted to do. But in the sciences, the, the main sciences that South African universities offer, I wasn't really interested in. Um, so I think that coupled with the education system here, that the education system, I really like the education system here because it's independent learning i i think i thrive off independent learning yeah and it's also you know well connected to the rest of the world you get yeah you get some connection to different areas as well different like potential yeah potential connections a similar language to south africa and a similar culture as well so yeah, like it was a no-brainer the uk was where i was meant to come yeah yeah, yeah. so for, for me i would personally say i had like so many options i had like canada mm -hmm. new zealand australia mm -hmm. uk and uk was the one which was open during the covid and I got admission at King's, so I decided to move to UK. Yeah. So that was that was my journey. As a yeah, woman. I mean, yeah. it worked out. <laughs> yeah, it worked out. <laughs> so, uh, how was your experience studying at University of Edinburgh as an international student? Uh, because it, I understand that it is like top world fourteen ranking university yeah. and it's a Russell Group University. Yeah. So, how was it? Was it challenging? It's oh, yeah, yeah. It was. I'm a, I mean, it probably wasn't as challenging as a master's, like it was meant to be. Um, it was, especially initially. It was like I said, like I did my high school in South Africa, and my South African qualification. It's. It wasn't IB or A levels or anything. So it was like I wasn't as advanced in let's say chemistry and biology as other students were. So initially, it was really like yeah, everyone else knew what was going on, and I was, I just had I had to learn everything um, mm -hmm. new. So yeah. That was good. But I think once I actually did get the hang of it, it's like, like I said earlier, I did like the freedom of independent learning. Mm -hmm. um, kind of, yeah, compared to other, like South Africa, for example, I think they put a big onus on tutorials and homework and, you know, going back to do things that I don't think I would have strived in that environment. Yes, yeah, so I did like the independent learning. Um, yeah, I kind of also trust my organization. Like, I trust myself in the way that I do independent learning so that... That worked out well. I didn't feel out of place in Edinburgh at all. Like even as an international student, like mm -hmm. it's not the most diverse place. Like that, there is no question about that. But I didn't struggle because there were a lot of internationals as well. And like Scotland, the people are very welcoming, very huh? friendly. Yeah. So yeah, it definitely wasn't somewhere that I felt oh out of place. Like I was definitely once I got into it and got used to it it was that's I, I so good it. to hear yeah. yeah that's so good to hear like i i can't imagine like you also had that phase of like getting to know your subject your teachers and getting yeah. to know about the uk education and for me i think it was like six months for me and one year the whole course was done <laughs> so <laughs> yeah was yeah different. yeah i think also i mean i also really ch i chose edinburgh as well because um scotland has four year degrees uh, um yeah. yeah england bachelor's in england are three years and scotland is four years and that kind of appealed to me as well because then yeah as you said it gave me more time to settle yeah into the uk and to settle into yeah, yeah so it was like four year course and unlike the yeah. three years that we have in the uk yeah that was yeah. great you yeah. know yeah yeah also like after your course 
you decided to go for another masters mm. and instead like most of the students go for a one year of uh, job job yeah. uh, doing the job and then they experience what is yeah. there in the job and then maybe choose a masters after so what was your thought process while choosing to do a master soon after your bachelor's i mean i finished in i graduated in 2021 um mm. and you know that was in the midst of covid no jobs nothing was going on it was it was it was actually horrendous yeah. i also i mean i didn't feel prepared to work to be honest i felt mm-hmm. that okay i've done four years of uni i don't feel like i know much or enough to actually contribute to the working scene yeah. um like i said i did pharmacology and pharmacology my understanding from it from like which i did is that to actually be a pharmacologist and work in pharmacology you need a phd oh, okay. and yeah that that was my feeling of it at least i didn't want to be in the lab uh-huh. I, i didn't want to go through a whole i know there's different types of phds but so yeah, i just didn't want to be lab based i didn't want to do a phd at all so i kind of i chose kings because i mean yeah as you know the course at kings is so focused on industry Oh, yeah. like it's not yeah they don't they don't prepare you to work in academia you can of course but they train you to work in industry so um yeah that emphasis really appealed to me like i i i got offers from UCL and Imperial and um University of Bath as well mm-hmm. and that's where like things made it very clear that it was industry focused so and i like i wanted to work you know as an as an international student if you want to like i kind of aspire to stay in the UK mm-hmm. um and if you want to do that is the easiest quickest ways to work like staying in academia kind of just prolonging the process so that brings me to another question so we shared the five common modules so for yeah. our viewers i did medical affairs at kings and uh, kelvin did uh, clinical pharmacology but we had five shared modules and that's mm-hmm. how we are classmates yeah and uh, it was a great time oh yeah it was great <laughs> yeah we had a great batch as well oh, and we then yes so <laughs> and then Kelvin went on to do his specialized clinical pharmacology modules. So what did you study there? Yeah, so we yeah, we have three specialist modules and one of them was compulsory and that was theory and practice of pharmacokinetics and that was a very scientific course. Like I I and I loved that. I enjoyed that. It, it's kind of it explored pharmacokinetics in detail and like how kind of it applies to clinical pharmacology and in clinical trials especially. So yeah, it did have a lot of we didn't do math, but we did learn the derivation of PK parameters and and then we had there were three courses where we, we could choose two. So so TPP was the theory and practice of pharmacokinetics that was compulsory and then the other two I did a course called exploratory drug development <laughs> and that one kind of explored the design and conduct of clinical trials um and like the challenges in these trials and kind of the considerations how you make decisions in it. um and it was an eye opener because like it kind of it taught me the intricacies of phase 1 trials like yeah clinical yeah. pharmacology at kings was very much focused on early phase phase 1 phase 2a yeah. um and that course was a really really good course to kind of just yeah show you into how a uh, preclinical animal work to clinical stuff and how you how, yeah how you conduct clinical trials and design them and the considerations for those and then my third one was practical clinical pharmacology which uh-huh. led on really well from exploratory drug development because it was yeah it was a one week placement at a clinical research organization um and yeah we just got to see clinical trials in practice and how yeah we got to see a dosing day for mm-hmm. a phase one trial uh, got to see how the different roles in a CRO work together to produce a clinical trial really um so that was very we didn't do any of the actual procedures and hands on things but we just got to ask people a lot of questions and we got to find out how they run clinical trials oh that's so cool that's so cool because uh in the common shared modules we were taught all this phase uh, preclinical phase 1 2 4 and everything and medical affairs dealt more, mostly about the phase 4 and after and but mm. there were things that medical affairs do in the phase 1 to 4 but it was mm. mostly the phase 4 and after but yeah. yours was mostly the pre clinical and phase yeah. one and phase it is one, really yeah. hard for me to understand because, yeah <laughs> so there were so many the MEDs and SADs and yeah. Yeah, so oh god yeah <laughs> congratulations Kelvin you were Thank the you. topper of the whole um, course of clinical pharmacology and it was such a great moment for you because I honestly felt that you were the most well deserving person you were dedicated uh-huh. you were organized <laughs> you were hard working so how did you stay motivated because you had your master's um, and previously you had your bachelor's and then your masters and this one year was a very busy day we didn't have any holidays or anything so how did you stay motivated <laughs> um well yeah thank you uh, yeah i think 
firstly, I drew a lot of inspiration from like from you guys, especially like like you, Rocky. I I drew a lot of inspiration from you. It's you. it was very inspiring to kind of you know be in such a good cohort of people who've come from such different backgrounds and have been so driven. I mean, like yeah, hearing about you guys doing a farm D and everything, yeah, all the that you did before is you guys are very knowledgeable and very open to discussions as well. And I must say, my motivation was definitely from speaking to you guys like every day because that yeah because you, you know i speak to you and i, I kind of see how you strive for excellence and how you've done so well before and you're doing well now so that was definitely the main motivation factor for me um yeah. kelvin was the motivation for all of us <laughs> kelvin was that <laughs> center of energy um, <laughs> so so you know you were like you know focused the whole yeah. entire year i tried to i think one thing that really got me through as well like it was a tough year like as you know it was a lot of work very intense um i found that when i focused on the why i'm mm-hmm. doing something it was definitely a lot easier to do the work and to stay motivated with it like the assignments we had such short turnarounds but i think once i understood the meaning behind each assignment and each kind of exam and task and like i know okay this question like they wanted to do this but what does that actually mean in the bigger picture of the module in the big, bigger picture of the course and also in the bigger picture of the pharmaceutical industry like especially for one of our assignments in clinical pharmacology we actually designed a drug drug interaction study <laughs> as an assignment it's something that it's like doing something that actually could be done by someone in industry that's marvelous theory. it's like <laughs> bottom up approach you are like yeah. the foundation and then going up where yeah. it's taking you wow that's amazing yeah that's- like rather than just think seeing it as another assignment that you have to do to get a master's it's actually like why am i doing this yeah and yeah. then it makes it easier then you can think through it better as well i agree with you uh, yeah, yeah in assignments where i have felt more connected with the topic you yeah, have done yeah. really yeah. well uh congratulations on landing on your fantastic job and i I believe that you are doing an amazing job which of course you are <laughs> and uh, the final question but one of the most important question that I ask everyone who comes to my channel is do you enjoy what you do I do I enjoy it I'm very privileged that I was able to get a job from course from directly from the course like I like I got a job at a company where I did my place definitely very um happy with that knowing the reason why I'm in the job knowing the reason why I'm doing something mm-hmm. um why that even needs to be sent why that form needs to be filled because it's important to get the trial going and that that does kind of make me feel like I'm actually I'm doing something good here I'm doing something that's helping I I I remember you saying that when you went there for your um, uh, placements you made sure that you were into the things that they were talking about that day mm. you were like very immersed immersed into whatever mm. they were talking you were asking questions you made sure that they knew you completely after that yeah. placement yes. yeah so oh, yeah. that's that's one thing that everyone should do during their placement they should not be like you are very disconnected with the whole yeah. uh, placement and you are just for the there for the day and just yeah. get your things done and then get back home yeah. yours was completely different you made sure that you were understanding the things and you were taking home the great yeah. message that the company was showing you around yeah. that's amazing and that it makes it easier to engaging and yeah like kind of going back to previous questions so with the course how i say motivated i think being engaged was definitely a thing like speaking to your course mate speaking to professors asking questions i i asked a lot of questions in class a lot of them were probably quite stupid sometimes i'm like i want to ask you because i want to engage thank you so much kelvin it was really so good to have you with us and you have shared a lot of information and really insightful uh, thoughts that our viewers can take back home and uh, for all the international students who are planning to move to uk and also for the students who are currently studying in uk or any other universities across london this is so useful so if they have any questions how can they connect with you i'm on linkedin <laughs> if you reach message me on linkedin i i must say i'm a bit slow to reply i must say, i will admit that but i will yeah Yeah, yes, yeah. Kelvin is a busy man, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, when I take long to reply, that's because I'm thinking about my response. So I can send you a real response and not just a quick one. So yeah. thank you so much, Kelvin. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for having me. me. This was fun. <laughs>